Well, that's the future, I guess, right? That's the future, right? <laughs> Good God. All right, so let's uh, let's move on a little bit with the uh, the good, the bad, and the weird. We're gonna go ahead and get that kicked off today. All right, and believe me, we got some interesting stories today. So, what should we start out with first? Let's start. Let's start out with the. Uh, so do the the good first. Um, what's up? We do the good form. Go Actually, no, I really can't wait to get to this one. So I, I really gotta talk about this one first. <laughs> okay, so this is definitely going to be on the weird, so anybody that's like, whoa, we're changing up. Yes, we are. We're changing up, because this story, it just grips me. Mm. So, okay. So a Texas man by the name of Gilbert Escamilla has stolen over $1.2 million uh, worth of fajitas mm. over a course of nine years. So Gilbert was uh, employed by Daryl B. Hester Juvenile Detention Center in San Bernardino, Texas, until August 2017 when it was discovered that he had been placing orders for fajitas using county funds and selling them for his own personal uh, profit. Jesus. I mean, hmm. You know, that's, it's definitely weird, right? But, I mean, are you telling me you wouldn't do the same thing? I mean, if you have a chance. I mean, yeah. This guy is kind of thinking ahead, man. He's like, he's like, oh, listen, I'm going to think ahead for my counterparts. And uh, Sorry, I'm technical. going to go down in history for this. No, oh, no. Well, he's being sentenced for uh, 50 years for yeah. this. Yeah, and he's he has to pay over 1.2 million dollars. He got. Hey, listen. For the fajitas. <laughs> his history and his legend will live on. He will have to pay dearly, but the fajita legend. <laughs> <laughs> the fajita legend. The fajitas. All right. So let's go ahead and move it into the. We'll do the good now. So I don't know if you guys heard about that Starbucks thing, right? Did you guys hear what happened finally? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I think the guy actually won the won the yeah, suit, right? Yeah. So you know, because this guy was racially profiled, uh, he was arrested outside the Starbucks, right? Because and the guy even admitted were racially profiled. Yeah, he racially. Racially profiled. Yeah. So, get this: instead of the money for himself, uh, they are putting it towards the community, to uh, for the city's youth to educate yeah. them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what sense. you want to do. That's what you kind of want to do is uh, for this. That's because if you would have just taken it. It would have just been another one of those things where people would have said, "Look, another racist thing," and then it would have just died away. So he's uh, he's setting up a two hundred thousand dollar grant program for high school entrepreneurs. That's, That's great. Yep. That's good. And uh, this is in exchange for expunging the city and the company of all claims, and that's from the uh, the plane of Dante Robinson and Ration Nelson. You know, I don't know. Should they be uh, expulsed though? Like companies like. Uh, Starbucks. I mean, these are co big conglomerate companies. No one's gonna forget what they did. Yeah, I mean, the CEO came out and legitimately was like, "We're going to fix this." And yeah. but he's recalling a lot of like, he, I think he closed a bunch of their Starbucks uh, facilities to train their employees to not be racist. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's yeah. bad. He had That's like bad. he had the, to not racially profile people. So how do you how do you, how do you retrain people not to be racist? Right. I don't know. Right. They're just it's racist, kinda... right? I mean, if someone tells you if you, where you work, like, hey, don't hate that black guy. All right, I won't. You think he's going to be like, yeah, I learned something here. He's going to be like, no, I'm going to just do it anyways because I don't like black people. <laughs> you know, I don't like the Hispanics. I, you know what I mean? Just, I don't know Speaking what that's going to do. Did you hear Trump? Is there any Hispanics, Hispanics in here? <laughs> no, nah, I guess not. I guess not. While they are saying, yeah. Build the wall. Build the wall. That was at his latest rally. All right, so here I got another one for you guys, and this one I actually want to say, uh, actually this isn't for this is actually on good and bad. So here, here this is interesting. So most Americans have uh, related pot convictions, right? Mostly have our non-level, you know, low-level non-violent drug offenders. Right. Well, states right now, like California, uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, Denver, Colorado, they are all expunging a lot of um, low-level non-violent drug offenders' uh, records for pot. Now, I don't know if many people don't know, but you, you actually lose quite a bit. If you get convicted for a pot charge, you lose your right to vote. First of all, you can't get a loan. That's another one. There's a series of things that happen when you get caught with a uh, pot-related conviction. So what some of these prosecutors are doing is they're racing old weed convictions. Now, the reason I say uh, why this is bad is because these are only those states that are doing it. What about the other states? Why aren't they doing it? More, like over 69% of America believes that pot should be legal. But yet, some of these other states are like, no, because then we spoke about this on the show before, you know, because you got to, you know, private prisons, prisons, it's all a number, man. It's all a numbers game. They make money off that. Those low-level pot convictions, they make money off that. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, you know, it's so it's such a, like, nail on the head right there, man, because, like, all these low-level, like, dime bag, 
pot convictions that these dudes are getting, it ruins them. Like, they get out, they're like, that's all I did. I didn't sell any hard drugs or anything like that. They can't get a job. They yeah. can't get a loan. You know, they're everything's smashed. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can't get nothing. So, like, erasing this is huge. Well, yeah. it's 10,000 um, misdemeanor and fel or felony uh, convictions that are going to be basically wiped away. That's, that's still kind of low, though. That's still low, low but low. it's a start. It is a start. Yeah, it's a start. It's it getting in my opening because, my goodness, how, how many of those people that are in jail right now that is supposed to be overpopulated that are just weed convictions? Right. Like, alone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah.